Eddie Stobart is one of the busiest haulage companies in Britain. With a turnover of almost half a billion pounds a year, it's big business and big pressure. This is what we don't want, mate, you know, this is what we don't want. Their drivers cover the distance round the earth 24 times a day, making deliveries every four seconds. And as the truck wheels stop moving, everyone suffers. Stobart also run trains, airports, and take on ambitious rail engineering jobs. But the truckers are at the sharp end. If I make a sudden movement, I'm either going to hit a car outside of me or I'm going to hit the barrier. And every delivery poses a new challenge. That's not what you want to see. There's a hazard of a job right there. This week, Fiona joins Stobart's equestrian team as they take on a volatile cargo. Whoa! Whoa! Started kicking out with his feet, broke its leg, and had to be put down. Who's got the X factor in the lineup delivering for Formula One? I need the right guys representing our company to make the best impression, but they've got to come up to standard. It's treacherous conditions for Stobart Rail's boys in blue. It's just when the roads are that dumb, just get you like an ice rink. And the engineers take on a mammoth bridge replacement. It was a little bit close, that was. Delivering fresh foods is down to Stobart's 350 chilled drivers. Their specialised trailers are on the road 24-7 to ensure over 3 million pallets of produce a year reach our supermarket shelves in tip-top condition. We've obviously got to be a lot more, like, get that one done and out of the way and get to the next one. 28-year-old Fiona Solchak has been part of the chilled delivery team for three years. She's proved she's up there with the best of them. People ask what job you do, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a lorry driver. Fiona's just one of 14 female truckers Stobart employs out of 3,000 drivers. They instantly think of the smallest lorry you can imagine. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, no, class one, you know, drive for Eddie Stobart. And they're like, really? <laughs> And being a trucker doesn't mean she's turned into one of the boys. And we've got all our nails intact still. I like having like having my nails done, having the hair done. Yeah, <laughs> pink laces and spotty socks. <laughs> Fiona's day starts at Stobart's Newark depot near Nottingham. Well, it's 6 a.m. Uh, ready and raring to start. She heads to the planning office to collect her daily orders. Oh, I could have a doorbell on here. <laughs> She's got a 10-hour shift ahead of her, and the planners cram as many jobs as they can into that time. There's your run sheet, there's your check sheet. Have a nice day. You know, Thank you. <laughs> oh, flipping neck, they've put enough on there. <laughs> She's been given what they call a multi-drop. Six drops and two collections. <laughs> With eight jobs in total, the clock starts now. She's looking beautiful. Loaded with a gourmet's delight of mushrooms, chicken and cheese, she hits the road. From her depot in Newark, Fiona's got a 200-mile round trip, collecting and delivering to eight different locations between Grimsby and Hull in and around Humberside. But she hasn't got off to a flying start. We stuck behind a very slow lorry this morning. It's crucial Fiona makes her first drop off on time. It's 68 miles away, and she's got just 90 minutes to get there. It's not helping our situation, really. When we get on that motorway, don't worry. <laughs> on the open road, there's no stopping this girl. We can go full throttle. <laughs> her first drop is to Grimsby, a seaside town famous for its fish industry. Absolutely stinks of fish, and I hate fish. I don't mind pet fish, but on the plate, no thank you. Luckily for Fiona, she's delivering 143 cartons of mushrooms to a supermarket warehouse. We just put it straight on hand, our keys in. They'll take off what they want. We can go. 
for every delivery, drivers have to give their keys into the warehouse, so no one drives off with the wrong truck. Look at our seat. We sit down all day and I still want to sit down. <laughs> but no rest for the wicked on this run. A few minutes later, Fiona gets the green light. Paperwork signed. We can go. <laughs> One job down, seven to go. Yeah, I've got a sat-nav, but I try my hardest not to use it. Preferring to use her own navigational skills, she heads to the next delivery. Uh, I've only been here once before, so I'm going off my memory as to where it is. Charlton Street, my brain, it, it works. Just going to go in, back this on, take this one pallet off and shoot straight out again. That's two drops done, six to go. Bye. Wow. <laughs> done. We can go. <laughs> She's living out every trucker's fantasy. She's ahead of schedule. She makes two more drops in Grimsby. Great. We're on. Then it's over the monolithic metal monster that is the Humber Bridge. At one and a half miles, it's one of the longest bridges in the world. And for trucks, it's the most expensive to cross in the UK. £18.30p. Don't want to be doing that one too many times. <laughs> the bigger the vehicle, the bigger the cost. Stobart pay a million pounds in toll charges a year, but time is money. The Humber Bridge just saved her 45 miles on her journey. But that could have all been for nothing. The police have shut the road that we need to go on. Uh, that's just got a bummer on it. <laughs> Fiona needs to get to the other side of the dual carriageway, which is totally blocked. With four jobs down and four to go, she's only halfway through her multi-drop. Fiona's perfect timekeeping has gone to pot. Oh, bloody hell, it's shut all the way. <laughs> Coming up, Fiona has to rise to the challenge. Hi, Annika Rice. We've got a problem. And the lads from Stobart Rail undertake a major task, replacing a bridge in just 48 hours. Worst case scenario, the sides of the bridge might pull in towards each other and, and, and snap. If you're ever on a British motorway, you'll pass an Eddie Stobart green and red truck every five minutes. But occasionally, a blue wagon will go past that stands out from the crowd. The company owns five of these low loaders that are dedicated to Stobart Rail. It's a part of the business originally developed by boss and former civil engineer Andrew Tinkler. We're trying to identify that rail is blue. Eddie Stobart, the transport company, is green. Andrew, along with his business partner, William Stobart, made their money through rail engineering before they bought Eddie Stobart. And they've continued to grow this side of the business alongside road haulage. They're all here to make money, and that's the main important thing, really. Yeah. <laughs> Stobart Rail has a turnover of £65 million a year. They make this by taking on massive rail repair jobs. One of the things that we do within rail is bridge replacements. This means network rail cancelling trains, so Stobart has to turn the job around in double quick time. If somebody gives me 52 hours to put a bridge in, I like to think I can do it in 38. The next job they're undertaking is replacing this rail bridge near Durham. Preparations start the day before with the delivery of the diggers and rail plant machinery. My job's very important because you keep a lot of people on on the trains and we keep the railway up to date. 56-year-old Ian Wilson is one of eight truckers who deliver rail machinery for the Stobart engineers. We're always taking old stock out and putting brand new stuff in. And... He's been in trucking for 35 years. Yeah, it gets exciting. I think I was born for this, for the driving. Today, Ian's arrived at the Stobart Rail Depot in Carlisle. It's where they keep all the rail plant machinery and the lorries that deliver them to the sites. Just take this one and then there should be another two buckets with it somewhere. Like the haulage trucks, the rail wagons also have the traditional girls' names. But that's where Lily Jean and the rest of the haulage trucks' similarities end. 
Lily Jean has a 560 horsepower engine capable of pulling eight double-decker buses. At over 30 feet long, this low loader can carry loads of up to around 40 tons. The folding ramps are hydraulically operated and the trailer can be extended to carry wide loads. It can go from 8 foot to 10 foot in width. Ian's loading up a 16 and a half ton excavating digger. He secures it with chains and metal ratchets known as twangs. I think I'll be losing my job if it fell off. From Carlisle, he's making a 75 mile journey to the Bishop's Grange Bridge near Durham on the East Coast Main Line. Driving conditions have turned treacherous as a blanket of fog begins to cover the motorway. It's getting thicker now. Fog can be the most dangerous of all weathers for any driver. What to tell you to watch out for freezing fog? When the roads are that damp and then it starts to freeze over, it just gets like an ice rink. With a 20-ton load and freezing fog, Ian needs to drop his speed to 20 miles per hour. The people in cars, they think you can brake the same as them, but you can't. You've got a lot more weight on. But as the weather improves, he manages to make up the time and arrives safely to the site. I think everybody's going to be happy today. Ian's digger is one of two million pounds worth of rail plant machinery for the bridge replacement project, which will start at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Find out later how they get on. Fiona Soltziak is taking on a fast and furious trucking challenge, a multi-drop. She has to make a 200-mile round trip delivering to eight locations in just 10 hours. She's halfway through her mission, but she's run into trouble. The police have shut the road that we need to go on. Fiona needs to spin around and join the traffic on the other side of the road. Oh, bloody hell, it's shut all the way. With just four jobs down and four to go, her multi-drop could be in jeopardy. Got to go and join that now. We're in a really poo position. Never one to rely on technology, her sat-nav stays firmly in the glove compartment. But reluctantly, Fiona has to do something that she hasn't done in a while. Oof. Oh, God, it hasn't been out in that long. It's full of dust. <laughs> We're that far. Surely. If this gamble doesn't pay off, I suppose. We will be, we are running late anyway now, but we will be even more later. But before she can put plan B into action, the police open the road again, so she decides to join the traffic. It seems to be all cleared up again. It changes just like that. <laughs> but it's left her half an hour behind schedule. That's what's been holding us all up. It's obviously hit the central reservation here, and we're back on track. <laughs> She's still got four jobs to do in under five hours, so she's got a lot of catching up to do. She arrives at a food wholesaler in Hull. That's what we like to see, company lorries, so we know we're heading in the right direction. It's crucial Fiona's chilled load of cheese arrives on time. Like Annika Rice. She heads to the office to hand in her paperwork. We've got a problem. We've had a bit of a snap. We've done all this to arrive here, and they are refusing this load because it's not due until Monday. Three days early means Fiona's cheese is turned away. It's unclear who's to blame for the error, but Fiona's paying the price. Do they not appreciate what we've just gone through to get here? <laughs> it means that she's got to lug the rejected cheese back to her home depot. But before that, she's got three more deliveries to make. And she's on a roll as she completes the next two deliveries with precision timing. Now we're going to go deep into Hull, into this tiny little shopping centre. And apparently they've made it even smaller. <laughs> I'm like, great. Fiona's 54-foot truck and trailer wasn't designed for town centre deliveries. 
we need to turn down here without demolishing <laughs> anything. Her last job of the day is also the toughest. To get to the butcher's shop, Fiona's got to reverse down a narrow alley, something that's sure to attract a male audience. Well there. Yeah, that top mirror gives you a false image of where you are. Right, should we get this down? It's not just her driving skills that impress. She's out to prove she's as fit as a butcher's dog. She shifts the rejected cheese to get to the chickens using a pump truck. They actually have electric ones these days. <laughs> Stobart's chilled trailers can be set between minus 10 and plus 20 degrees centigrade. Before his birds get unloaded, the butcher checks their temperature. Three degrees, that's well in our boundaries, so we're, uh, we're good to go. It's Chicks Ahoy as Fiona's workout continues. A pallet, yay! They got heavier, unless I was getting weaker. I'm going to off a bit now. <laughs> and back goes the rejected cheese. Cheese, I didn't realise how heavy it was. So glad I didn't eat the stuff. Can you imagine that sat inside you? <laughs> After a 10 hour day, 200 miles, traffic chaos, six drops, two collections, and a cheese nightmare, Fiona heads back to the depot. Another multi drop under her belt. We can go home now and start the weekend. One hundred and thirty seven miles away in Durham, the Stobart rail team is spending their weekend helping engineering firm May Gurney replace a bridge on the East Coast Main Line. Three hundred and forty eight train services have been cancelled, so they've got forty eight hours to get the line back up and running. Former truck driver Dave Mulholland is now Stobart's official photographer, and he's here to record this historic event. Down there, I don't know if you can see it, is the, is the bridge. And we're going to take that out and then drive it back down here. Then they're going to pick the new bridge up. This is all, lay, this is all layman's terms and very simple. And then they're going to drive the new bridge back in. Hey, presto, new railway bridge. And trains go again. With over 100 people working on demolishing a bridge weighing 120 tonnes, anything could go wrong. So Dave's photographic records serve a very important purpose. We do time-lapse video and condense it all into a 10-minute film at the end of it for everybody to see exactly what's happened. And if there's been any sort of problem, God forbid, there won't be, I know, you can, you can see exactly the sequence that led up to it. Right, fantastic. Dave's main concern is finding the right spot to fix his time-lapse camera. So we could do with it we could do with it pointing in that direction. This is a great place for it here. Where are we going to power it from? Finally, Dave finds just the place to stick it. We're going to put it on this cherry picker, which is then going to be raised up to its maximum height so we've got the best view possible, and it's going to work perfectly. Before the old bridge is demolished, it's stripped of its track. To do this, the Stobart lads use heavy lifting equipment called Doosans. Site supervisor Richard Edgar is in charge of safety on the project. They'll put the chains under the panels and then they'll lift them out together in a tandem lift. By lowering their rail wheels, they can drive on tracks and can lift up to 10 tonnes. With the track out of the way, the diggers power into action. And this machine here will dig out all the ballast. Ballast is the layer of stones that the track sits on. The excavators can lift two tons with each grab. Four hours down and 44 to go, the bridge is now ready to come out. And that means bringing in the mother of all monster machines. This is a self-propelled modular transporter. Each module is a lifting and transporting platform connected together to form a 96-wheeled beast. 
with no one in the driving seat. It's the ultimate in big boys' toys. This giant robot steering and hydraulics are remote control. This combination can lift a massive 860 tons. That's enough to lift the Eurostar train and all 18 carriages. But before the transporter can remove the bridge, there's a problem. Too much weight from the ballast has piled up in the middle. The worst case scenario, the, the sides of the bridge might pull in towards each other and, and, and snap. It just, just doesn't seem to be safe at the moment. The diggers are deployed to even out the ballast to make the bridge safe for lifting, but it's going to take time. It's a very uh, tight schedule. They've only got 24 hours to go before they have to hand the line back to Network Rail. If that deadline's not met, the contractor could face fines of more than £200 a minute. After a half-hour delay, Richard's confident that the bridge can be removed. Everything's safe and steady. It'll get driven right out. The transporter makes light work of lifting out the 120-ton bridge. It does the job in 20 minutes. I think the average rail passenger probably has no idea what goes into maintaining the railway. And a lot of work goes on in unsociable hours and sociable conditions. Now the battle to get the replacement bridge in is on. The area it's going to sit on has to be made as flat as a pancake. So first, all the rubble is removed. The, the bits that weren't level would need jackhammering out and jackhammered level, which is what they're doing at the moment. The crews work on 12-hour shifts round the clock. So time for Richard and his team to head for bed while the night shift clocks on. My name's Mark Blessed. Uh, we've just had a shift change and I've taken over from Richard Edgar and I'll be taking over the site safety until the bridge goes in. Mark's got to oversee the foundations going in, which means truckloads of concrete. 42 ton. A little bit behind schedule, just doing the final preparations now, and hopefully we should be moving the bridge any time now. Three hours delayed, they need to catch up. Right, it's crunch time and we're off. The transporter comes back into play, carrying the new bridge into place, and it's no mean feat. At a whopping 320 tonnes, it's twice the weight of the old one. I'm moving it into position now, trying to avoid all the trees. The bridge is steered past with inches to spare. Yeah, it was a little bit close, that was. Took a bit of wiggling around just at the end there, just to get it centralised. But now it's down, and hopefully trains will be running on Monday morning. With the new bridge in place, it's down to Network Rail to weld it and secure it into position. The bridge replacement project was 18 months in the planning, completed in 48 hours by a 100-strong workforce and cost a million pounds. The line was handed back at 1am Monday morning, and at 6.35, the first commuter train from Middlesbrough to Newcastle christened the brand new bridge. Coming up, Fiona has a mare of a job on her hands. The middle horse has disattached himself from the tiring. And Stobart is looking for drivers with the X Factor to deliver tires for Formula One. I wouldn't turn up to an interview with a football top on. When Stobart boss Andrew Tinkler isn't running a multi-million pound business, he spends his time pursuing his other great passion. I think work, 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 25 hours a day, seven days a week doesn't really work. You need a break and you need a hobby. 
Andrew's been breeding and racing horses for the last 20 years. In total, we have about uh, 72 horses. I'm a celebrity, which is a chestnut one there. He's entered his thoroughbreds in up to 300 races. This year will be a first. He'll be jetting three of his most prized horses to a prestigious race in Dubai. <laughs> it's the Dubai Carnival, and it's a very big festival and lots of prize money up for grabs, so the reason we take him there to try and win some of that money and fetch it back here. Today, Andrew's roped in chilled driver Fiona Solchak to help his equestrian team transport his horses to Manchester Airport for their flight to Dubai. It's a dream come true for Fiona. She loves horses so much, she's got one of her own. I'd love nothing more than to combine my horses and this lorry driving. I think it would just be the perfect job for me, really. Three years ago, Fiona took her HGV licence so she could transport her own horse, and that led to a career in trucking. Hello, I'm going to be your driver, little boy. It is important that they're well looked after, and, uh, and Fiona, her first job driving a truck was driving a horse box, so I thought it was good to have her on hand. The horses have got a three and a half thousand mile journey ahead of them. You're going on a one heck of a trip, aren't you, mister? <laughs> Thoroughbreds are notoriously highly strung, and transporting them is a delicate operation. And it's the job of Mark Carruthers, head of the equestrian team, to manage their mood swings. The slightest little thing will upset one of these horses, and by a click of a finger, that horse can just go ballistic. Mark, along with groom Emma, will be accompanying Fiona, and they'll be travelling in one of the most luxurious horse boxes on the market. The custom-built Oakley horse box can accommodate up to five horses in decadent air-conditioned surroundings. The thoroughbreds can enjoy their own onboard sauna to keep them relaxed. CCTV means their every move can be monitored throughout their journey. For the two-legged passengers, there's a fully equipped kitchen, living area with hand-stitched leather upholstery and a separate bathroom with power shower. Yeah, I think Mark may have just lost his truck, really, to be honest with you. <laughs> we'll just right. have to make one alteration. I think we should have some seriously pink fleeces so they know we are the Stovar team. <laughs> We're going to have the most pimped-out horse box. <laughs> the wagon is worth a staggering £430,000. It's a big investment for boss Andrew, but after a tragic incident last year on their way to the airport, he believes it's money well spent. We got to the airport, it must have been a noise or something upset the horse, and it went absolutely nuts. All the roof was all smashed where it had been hitting the roof with its head. And then the fire crew had to cut half of the side of the lorry out to get the horse out. So, and, and then as soon as the horse saw daylight, it started kicking out with its feet, broke its leg, and had to be put down. Just half an hour into the two-hour journey, and a worried Andrew Tinkler is on the phone. Hello? Yeah, they're fine. We'll be on, we're on schedule. All right, then. See you later. Because he'll be, he'll be biting his nails <laughs> before you miss this, this flight. We're going to get them horses to the airport. The team is heading from Darlington, 110 miles southwest to Manchester Airport. But Fiona's spoken too soon. A major accident involving a truck has blocked the road ahead. This is your worst nightmare with these horses. The horses need to be kept on the move at a steady speed, otherwise they could get stressed. We don't want to race up to the car and have to stop and then set off and stop and set off, given this rocking motion, or try and just hang back. But in all fairness, if we've got to stop, we've got to stop. <laughs> if the truck comes to a standstill for too long, the horses start to get bored and agitated. Well, what I'm going to try and do is slow it down as much as I can and keep it rolling. Fiona's doing the right thing. She's got, like, a good gap in front of her and keeping the wagon rolling. So well, hopefully we'll be all right. They've got past the road accident, but it's too late. One of the horses is already spooked. They pull over to sort out the problem. The middle horse of our three has disattached himself from the tiring. 
After last year's fatality, Mark needs to intervene. He climbs into the horse box to reattach the chain before all the horses get panicked. He's got to try and get to the middle one now without spooking the first one too much. But it's only making the situation worse. So Mark retreats and decides he needs to get in from the other side. Finally, he manages to reattach the tethering chain. But now they've been stood still for 20 minutes and the horses are getting restless. If we drive, the horses will settle down a lot more and this one will just get his head back over and just calm down. Get set off. Oh, get set off. Oh. Once they're in motion, the horses settle down and it's crisis averted. Soon, Manchester Airport is in sight. Yeah. Yay. Wrapped in blankets to keep them warm, the racehorses are delivered to the airport unscathed. They travel in mobile stables, where a groom will stay with them in the hold throughout the seven-hour flight. But once you're up there, it's all straight lines, basically. You know, a bit of turbulence, they don't seem to, they seem to cope with that fairly well. You know, you're not doing any sharp turns, there's no roundabouts, there's no, uh, there's no people sticking their brakes on in front of you, you know. They're checked in with their own individual passports. The horses wait in a holding area, effectively a departure lounge. These portable stables are carried via an airport rollerbed lorry onto a scissor lift and raised to the side of the aircraft. Their return flight costs £7,000, including an in-flight meal of hay and plenty of legroom. And they're off. Next stop, Dubai. The horses make their 3,500 mile journey in good form, and boss Andrew Tinkler is there to cheer on his trio of thoroughbreds to the finish line, in very respectable second and third places. In 2008, Eddie Stobart won the most prestigious contract in the haulage business, delivering Formula One cars. We are pretty much good to go. This year, they've won a new contract delivering the tyres for all the F1 teams. We're taking a big step in with Pirelli. We're becoming partners with them, so it is a massive deal for Stobart's. So Paul, along with special projects manager Neil Burden, need to get a crack team of 10 drivers together. I need the right guys representing our company to make the best impression, but they've got to come up to standard. The dream job was open to all 3,000 Stobart drivers. 150 applied and 40 hopefuls have made it to the interview stage. That's a once in a lifetime opportunity, isn't it? To work in, it's something I've been interested in you know, all my life just can't turn it down, you know. Paul is a former motorsports delivery trucker and knows the reality of the job. There might be foreign travel involved, but no villa in Monaco or supermodel girlfriends for these Formula One drivers. Just thousands of miles of hard slog. It's not all glamour and glitz. There are very dirty jobs that we're going to expect these guys to do. Time for special projects manager Neil Burden to get rid of the F1 glory hunters. First of all, you need to take your rose tinted glasses off for about Formula One, right? Because I can more or less guarantee you now you'll not see your car race. Just get away from this Formula One thing. This is a really, really hard job. If I'm not hard now, I'll have to be hard later on down the line, and that will be in front of the customer. So it's best to weed out the chaff now. The drivers will be spending up to six weeks at a time away from home. So Paul needs to know they're totally committed to the job. What about being away from home? Have you got family? I've got a girlfriend. It is a concern to both of us. Obviously, I wouldn't let you down through the season. I'd be there to do the job. You can't. I can't have people coming to me and saying, my girlfriend's on the phone crying that I'm not at home. I need to go home. Tough. <clears throat> the drivers will be working in extremely hot temperatures 
putting tyres on the wheel rims and being general dog's bodies, so they need to be able to take the pace. Hard working, turn up on top. I just wanted him to say something, yeah, I'm really positive, but didn't, so. Uh, any languages? English. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much as well. I wouldn't turn up to an interview with a football top on. Just as Paul's about to give up, in walks 24-year-old university graduate Scott Wilkinson from Leamington Spa. Yeah, but I'm very much a flexible bloke. I just get on with whatever he's doing. With no job to go to when he left uni, Scott became a truck driver. He's been delivering chilled food for Stobart for the last year. The, the, the initial trouble being so young and, and, and looking so young is that not people uh, are willing to sort of give you a chance, whereas, fortunately, Stobart did. Trucking is in his blood. My dad used to have a couple of trucks which he used to use for some uh, uh, foreign haulage and just sort of growing up with them, to be honest with you, which has led me to, to this now. <laughs> Scott's keen to show his degree in logistics management doesn't mean that he can't get down and dirty. I'm very much a sort of working bloke, to be honest with you. I like him. He's young, he's enthusiastic, he's got no ties. I, I hope the reality of it doesn't bite when he gets out there and realises he is away for a long time, but, no, I like him a lot. I've always been to F1 and always been into trucks and everything, so it's just the, the top job I've always wanted. 26-year-old Brummie Kamar Zamir is up next. He's been a chilled food driver for five years. Physical fitness, how are you? I think we're quite fit. I'm, I, know, I know we run three, four days a week, roughly about three months a day. If he gets the job, Kamar will have to leave behind his wife, Monica, and seven-year-old son, Danny, who's a big Eddie Stobart fan. I just love transport. I like that's good transport. It's not just because Dad works there. Kamar didn't imagine he'd get to the interview stage. I never ever thought, you know, I'd ever get a sniff of it, to be honest. But you've probably got one chance at getting it. He's hoping his family commitments don't count against him. I haven't got family yet, but, uh, you know, they do understand it's something I want to do. It's yeah. something I wanted to do for a long time. Came across well, uh, intelligent, articulate. So, yeah, he's a really good, strong candidate. I am a big F1 follower. You know, I, I'm not going to tell, tell you what team I support. After nine gruelling hours of interviews, Neil and Paul get down to choosing their F1 squad. Well, these here have got what we want, and I can see these all starting on, on the Pirelli job. About until afterwards. There are 40 hopefuls who've got a one in four chance of getting the job. Nine places have been filled, and now they're down to the last one. Coming up. Free. Which one of these drivers will have that special something Stobart is looking for? I really want to see him succeed. I like him. Stobart Motorsports delivery team is looking for the right candidates to deliver tyres for the Formula One season. These here have got what we want. And I can see these all starting on, on the Pirelli job. They've chosen their first nine drivers, and now it's down to the last place. Fitness, you've got to be hard. You've got, you've got to be... One strong candidate is 24-year-old university graduate Scott Wilkinson. He's a young lad, and I think there's, you've probably got a lot of potential there going forward. Yeah, he was. He was just an impressive kid. The other contender is 26-year-old chilled driver Kamar Zamir. You know, just all round, he really did impress. I, I really like him. One of them is about to get the phone call of a lifetime. It's been a long day, but this is the reward at the end of it. Hello, come here. Oh, yeah. Hello there, it's, uh, it's Paul Smith from uh, the Motorsport Division. Oh, hi, mate. We'd like to uh, offer you a position on uh, the Pirelli contract. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Scott will just have to wait till next year to reapply. But Kamar's life is about to change in the most dramatic fashion. Really chuffed to find out that I'd got the job. Really pleased. Kamar is leaving almost straight away, so today he's making his final drop for Stobart's chilled division. With the Pirelli, it'll be obviously it'll be it'll be a totally different kettle of fish. It'll be fitting toys. Makes a change from Scotch eggs, which is what he's delivering today. Hello, mate. Uh, it's Stobart's. He's got three thousand of them in the back of his trailer. Once we're once we're tipped. They'll give us a shout on the tannoy. 
From Rotherham, Kamar's now heading 105 miles back to his depot in Alcester, south of Birmingham, where he's got to say goodbye to his colleagues. It is a little bit sad, because obviously, you know, I've got I've made a lot of friends here. Well, congratulations, I heard. Cheers, Jamie, yeah. You're looking forward to it? Absolutely, mate, yeah. Nervous? Oh, I am very nervous, mate, yeah. Well done. Where's everybody going? They're all going home, aren't they? Last day? Last day, yeah. Well, you take care. Cheers, mate, yeah. Nice one, yeah. Best, yeah. Cheers, Jim. Good job. But saying goodbye to his family is hardest of all. He's got a really good relationship with Danny. They're very close, and so he's probably going to miss him. But at the same time, he's very excited, and I can tell he's really happy. He can't wait. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, it's time to get acquainted with his new home on wheels. As a day driver, he's never spent the night in a truck, so it's going to be a whole new way of life. It's nice and clean, and I'll try and keep it that way. You've got a micro in there, and again, you've got, a, you've got a little cupboard at the top as well, you know, if you want to store stuff up there as well. And then in there, we've got, a, we've got a coffee maker. Under the bunk, we have got our little fridge freezer. Uh, yeah, so I'm really, really happy with this, to be fair. Kamal's truck is all new to him, but as a chilled driver, he's familiar with the trailer on the back. That's the fridge. Obviously, you can, you can use that to heat all cool. Um, in our case, we'll be heating tires, obviously. The new tyre trailers have an underfloor water heating system to keep the tyres at a constant temperature of plus 30 degrees centigrade so they can be easily fitted on the wheel rims of the Formula One cars. The trailer's walls are two inches thick to keep it insulated. It can hold as many as 600 tyres. Combined, the truck and trailer cost £200,000. But today, Kamar's trailer is empty. Along with two other trucks, he's setting off on a 1,200-mile journey. They'll be picking up tyres from Valencia in Spain, where they're being delivered for pre-season testing. But first, they have to get on the Eurotunnel, something Kamar's never done before. I'm sure I'll be nervous getting onto the train, but, um, you know, obviously, you know, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. What the reference is now, which is F1. Kamar's driving skills are about to be tested to the max. See what's all on his took, and then uh, we'll sort of follow him on. Kamar lets the first two trucks lead the way. It does look limit narrow. Fingers crossed. We should be, <laughs> we should be okay, sir. Let's see, let's see where we go. He's now got to get his brand new two hundred thousand pound truck and trailer onto the Eurotunnel train, and he's literally got the space of a cigarette packet either side. Come on, then. Here we go. Let's see what we can do. When they said it's three inches either side, I thought they were joking with me, to be honest, but, uh, no, they weren't. So we just have to be a little bit careful. We don't want to be scrubbing them and dangling the steps and whatnot, so we just go steady. But I think uh, we made it up here safely. Kamar's pulled it off without a hitch. There we go. There we are. Welcome to Eurotunnel. See you later, England. Kamar's life in the fast lane starts here. Next stop, Valencia and Formula One. Coming up next week, Stobart expands into Ireland, but it's a bumpy ride. The road networks up here are not good. The grass verge is just complete bog. If you go into that, it's game over. One trucker faces a load of trouble. <laughs> and temperatures rise at a chilled warehouse. Let's just say it's going to hurt the fan very soon. Whoa! Sometimes it's me, I'm really. 30 f***ing pallets here. Here's your chance to vote for something a little different in the famous Rear of the Year competition. Forget the standard rumps. Pippa Truck, Channel Truck and Emma Truck are all up for the coveted title, so go to channel5.com slash sexystobart and get voting. Next tonight, the start of an unmissable two-parter for the season finale of The Mentalist.